Okay, so Darius, tell me, how did that make you feel? See, when I was like five and I didn't know what I was doing and they had went down there and they had said I had to go and I don't know what had happened. And I was just like, no, man, it's just crazy. So oh, why do you man. think it made you feel that way? I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. Would you like some tissue? I don't know. I don't want no tissue. Okay. Let's try our breathing exercises. In. Out. In. Out. Okay. Do we feel better now? So, okay. So, all right. So I was at work, right? Okay. And just out of nowhere, an alligator just came down the hall. Mm-hmm. And when they came down the hall, they just, they just, just, just bit me on the butt. And where were you when this alligator came down the hall? I was, I was in the bathroom. So how did it get that close to you? I, I was, I could, I couldn't move. I was on the toilet. I was, on, I, I couldn't move. I was on the toilet, and and we had no tissue. I was waiting on somebody to bring me some tissue. So the alligator came down the hall into the bathroom stall, where you froze in fear. And it somehow got behind you and bit you on the butt. Yeah, it was a little alligator. So a baby alligator came down the hall. With big teeth. Got into the bathroom. With big teeth. Went into the bathroom stall with you. It had big teeth. Got behind you. It had big teeth. And bit your butt. It bit me on the booty. Are the teeth still in your butt? Y'all, <laughs> I can't do it no more. Hey, man, check it out. It is the Sig and Yank Show. I'm your guy. How you going to say the teeth still in your butt? It's the Sig and Yank Show. I'm your dude, DJ Whitebread, man. And this is my girl. Miss Yak. Miss Yak. And I'm DJ Whitebread. I said that already, didn't I? You did. Today, man, on the show, man, we're going to talk about mental health, stresses, and stuff like that, man. We got my boy coming on in a little while, man. You know what I'm saying? My boy, my boy, my boy. It's about to get the deep, y'all. Therapist. He's going to come on. And therapy is not all about sitting on that couch, y'all. That is one of the stigmas. We're going to knock that thing out. We're going to, you know, we're going to talk to him in a minute. Yo, hey, you ready to go ahead and get this thing started? Let's get it cracking. Let's go ahead and do it. Hey, y'all, we are back, y'all. We back, we back, we back. Hey. Y'all like that dick. I know y'all like it. Y'all like it. Y'all like it. But, man, check it out. Mm -hmm. It's so much stress going on out there, man. We are dealing with super... People deal with a super amount of stress right now today, man. You're right. Especially, like now, with the Olympics going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? These athletes, they dealing with so much stress, you know? And it, it's so funny because they they put up with it. You're right. And and now it's to the point where it, the the added stress is making them break. Like look at look at look at Simone Biles. Mm-hmm. Look at um, uh, Naomi Osaka. Naomi, say it again. Osaka. Naomi Osaka. Mm-hmm. Look at look, look at uh, Shakari Richardson. She right. she chose to smoke a little weed on her. You know what I'm saying. So I'm gonna play this this video from 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 an interview with uh, what was that the Today Show from with um, Simone Simone Biles. Biles. and she talking about how how she dealt with it because everybody was saying 
Oh, she hurt her foot. It was a middle. Of, no, it, it, it her mouth. All right. So here we go. Physically, I feel good. I'm in shape. Um, emotionally, that kind of varies on the time and the moment. Simone Biles withdraws from the team finals at the Tokyo Olympics due to a medical issue. Coming here to the Olympics and being the head star of the Olympics is not an easy feat. So we're just trying to take it one day at a time and we'll see. The 24-year-old gymnast opened up to the Today Show on Tuesday after she left the competition floor with the Team USA medical trainer following her first rotation on the vault of the women's team final at the Tokyo Olympics. Simone did not do the m &R vault, but opted instead for another move, which earned her a 13.766, the lowest score of any of her Olympic showings. And in a statement, USA Gymnastics said, quote, Simone has withdrawn from the team final competition due to a medical issue. She will be assessed daily to determine medical clearance for future competitions. Reserve Jordan Childs replaced Simone after she left the floor ahead of her uneven bars rotation. She later returned to the arena with her right leg wrapped and hugged her teammates, who finished the competition without her. And Simone told today how the team handled the news of her withdrawing. They were freaking out. <laughs> they were like crying and I was like, you guys need to relax. You're going to be fine without me. Go out there. You kick some butt just like you've done in training and just lay it out on the floor and see what happens. Earlier this week, Simone, who already has four Olympic gold medals, got candid about the pressures of competing, writing on Instagram, quote, I truly do feel like I have the weight of the world on my shoulders at times. I know I brush it off and make it seem like pressure doesn't affect me, but damn, sometimes it's hard. Something she's opened up to ET about before. Whenever we perform, we're expected to win, which it can kind of get a lot at times because we're so young with such a big amount of pressure, but I think we handle it very well. And following Simone's team finals exit, the Today Show caught up with three-time Olympic gold medalist Allie Raceman, who echoed all that too. Watching, like, Simone has more pressure than any other gymnast I've ever seen in my lifetime. It's, it's insane how much pressure is on her. Um, you know, I, when I saw her with the medic, I, my heart dropped and I... I was just devastated and I still am. And while Simone may be out of the competition, figuratively, she's already won because she's a top tier class act. Everyone does strive to be the best and it is hard whenever you have a team so good and you have to compete against each other. But then on the other side, we're such good friends that we're rooting for each other no matter what and we just want the best for each other. After withdrawing, the athlete stayed and cheered on her teammates, got them chalk for their hands, encouraged them and hugged them. Something retired American artistic gymnast Michaela Skinner and Allie talked about with today. My heart broke for her. I mean, I can't even imagine what she's going through right now. I wish I could just run down there and give her a big hug. I know she's gonna hang in there and you know, keep cheering for the team. You know, she's human and I think sometimes people forget that. And Simone, just like everyone else is doing the best that she can, Simone is there right now cheering for her teammates, her Cheering for them is going to help them out a lot. And Allie was right. It did help. The team went on to earn the silver in the final. Super proud of these girls that stepped up and did what they needed to do. And now we're um, Olympic silver medalists. So it's something that they'll cherish forever. Yeah, see, that was a video from E! Entertainment Online yep. from the Today Show. I want to give them credit because they did that. We did. If I could, I would touch them and get those interviews, but I can't do. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a professional. I'm not a professional uh, in nowhere, shape, fashion, form. I don't know jack about mental health other than I'm crazy at times. Very. So what I did, I reached out to somebody that I know that is a professional. Okay. My man, my my homie, my partner, uh -huh. my church member, <laughs> Mr. Herbert Wilkerson. What's Yay! going on, Herb? Hey, hey, hey. How What's going on? Man? First, before we start, man, give these folks your credentials because you you got a lot of them. <laughs> so uh, my name is Herbert Wilkerson. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I am a licensed professional counselor. Uh, and 
I have a master's in counseling, undergrad in social work, and I've been a counselor uh, for the better part of 14 years. I've uh, been in the social services field for about 17 years uh, in other capacities along with social work. And uh, I've counseled in quite a few in quite a few environments, quite a few, quite uh, several environments uh, dealing with all age, all age ranges and mental health uh, you know, disorders and whatnot. I also have a special certification in working with people who have been sexually abused and who may have some sexually acting out behaviors. And uh, I currently work with college age students and I uh, also do some private practice work. And so uh, I've been around the block, to say the least, and uh, definitely ready to have this conversation because it is a hot button issue when it comes yeah. to how these athletes are, uh, you know, meeting their own mental health needs uh, at this point in time. Right, right. So her, um First, publicly, I want to tell you thank you, man, because when I was between jobs, you put me on, and I ended up having to having to do a lot of bell hugs with a whole lot of little musty little boys. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, yeah. I, I, I learned a lot, man. I learned a lot. I, I learned how to how to control myself more. You know, yeah. when you work with you work mental health, man, you learn how to control yourself a whole lot more than you think you will. Oh yeah, because um, you realize. A lot of what they're doing is not about you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's easy to make it about yourself. Man, the first time I got spit on in my face, I hell, I almost lost it. But you know, yeah, you don't lose uh, the, the <laughs> anger from being spit on. Anytime I happen to me, I felt it. That's for certain. <laughs> <laughs> but I can remember one time in particular, man. I got spit on, and it was it was after I had been there for a minute. I got spit on, and I looked at the boy, and I said, "You know what?" That's all right. I said, come here. And he walked up to me and I hugged him. Still with, with the spit running down the side of my face. And right then I was like, oh man, I either got to do one or two things. Either I got to get the hell out of here or I got to go pray because something just happened to me. I don't know what it is. But let's talk about these stresses that these these athletes are dealing with, man. All right. How how can we deal with this stress, man? Because I know me, I I got stress every day, and you know, I, I sometimes I deal with my stress this way. Yeah. Well, uh, so I, I'm I'm going to start in a few ways because I think this whole conversation, it's important for us to be having as black people because there's a lot of stigma connected to mental health and mental illness with black people, uh, and that's a lot of my work is dealing with mental illness and mental stigma, mental health stigmas when it comes to black people and help seeking services and just being open about, you know, dealing with mental health. So to start out, uh, mental illness and mental health are two different things. Like mental illness is something you get diagnosed with. Like you go to the doctor, okay. you get diagnosed with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, depression, PTSD, anxiety disorders, or something like that. All right. And so mental health, uh, the way we look at that is, is everybody has a relationship with mental health. You don't need a diagnosis mm -hmm. to have a relationship with mental health. And you can have mental health struggles and not necessarily have a diagnosis or need medication. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like physical health or emotional well-being. Like we all have a relationship with that. Uh, and then, too, when I was listening in earlier, just to kind of correct the language, because I think that's a part of it, too with the stigma is that the language we've kind of like developed around talking about mental health and mental health issues and mental illness is that, you know, you said the term, uh, like these athletes have been breaking, right? They've broken or what have you. And, yeah. you know, I think, you know, it's not to like just call you out, but I think it's that language that's connected to it that we have to be careful with because, you know, acknowledging and taking care of your mental health needs doesn't mean you like, you're admitting weakness or you've broken or whatever, a lot of times it takes a lot more strength and mm -hmm. vulnerability and courage to like acknowledge and do that kind of stuff, especially in the spotlight. And so, uh, so I would say that as well. Um, and then you got to think about too, you know, just the, the position, you know, people in general may be in people in general deal with high levels of stress and being overwhelmed on a day-to-day -day basis. You're right. People yeah. deal with, you know, things that can lead to depression 
even if you may not be diagnosed with depression, but you can have like bouts of depression. Uh, you deal with grief and loss. You deal with job loss. You deal with relationships ending. You deal with stress from work. You deal with financial stuff. You deal with being black in society, you know, which is like an underlying thing to a lot of this. And so, you know, it's there in general. And when you're in the public eye like that, you know, it just, everything is more, it's more pressure connected to it. Uh, so you see it in Simone Biles, you see uh, the tennis player taking care of herself, you see Shakari Richardson and what happened with her situation. You see Kyrie Irving in basketball talking about his situation and his mental health. Same with Kevin Love and DeMar DeRozan. And you're seeing more conversations, you know, with people, you know, discussing mental health and their own challenges and struggles and how they deal with it. And so, uh, and in most cases, these people are criticized first before they're, uh, you know, before they're really supported. Um, you see and Simone Biles receive a lot of support right now, but um, the tennis player, I, mean, I don't want to mess up her name, but she really received a lot of criticism first because she, you know, chose yeah, they, they tried to dog her out. Yeah, and so now people, of course, and make it seem like they have a, a heart for the situation now, but a lot of people were really criticized for how they approached her, and so they're approaching Simone Biles differently. Um, but I don't think it was just, you know, just the fans in general. It was just it was Japan. Japan, you know, is is known for their racist views against you know mixed children uh over there as well and so she is you know her mother's Jap japanese her father to my, to my o -Osa -Osa right naomi osaka yeah, yeah father, her father so. her father's haitian yeah and you know just the fact that she was even picked to be able to light the torch over there received <laughs> a lot of criticism um yeah. you yeah. know and so then it was like when she just when she lost it was like well gee if we let you do this you could at least one yeah, it's, um, and so imagine what that does to a person's mental health when when you have, like, say, a bad parent or a bad spouse or whatever. Okay, that's, that's a lot of your mental health. If you have an entire, like, country or entire groups of people and entire networks and entire, you know, all these things, right. you know, it, it pushes you. And, you know, I have a lot to say about a lot of this, but um, with Simone Biles, I'll say this, like, so when all the stuff came out about these uh, gymnastics uh, participants being uh, molested by this coach, you know, a few years ago. Wait, that I coach is in wait, jail wait, now. Wait, I didn't know about that. Yeah. yeah. For real? Was was time, time, was time time of of abuse. I missed that one. But that's not uncommon in gymnastics. It's that's not. unfortunately, so, that's pretty common. And so <laughs> Simone Biles was one of the people that was molested by this individual. Oh, um, wow. And so and she's, you know, she's talked openly about that. Uh, she's diagnosed with ADHD, all right? Um, in the 2016 Olympics, she was able to take her medication, I think up to a certain point. And in this uh, Olympics, like, the medication is considered a banned substance. And so oh, she's- wow. so, so she's ADHD. Yeah. So like Adderall, that, that, something like that. Yeah, so I, I don't think she was taking Adderall, but Adderall is a medication, but- Okay. So, you know, where she, you know, she's living with that diagnosable disorder and she's taking medication for it and now she's not able to take it in a high pressure situation like the Olympics in a different country without fans and family support. And so Hello. if you consider, you know, all of those factors, it's like, you know, that's just, that's, that's a lot to have to process and you're Simone Biles. You right. know, you have moves named after you, so you're supposed to be just untouchable. Uh, right. So, yeah. Right. Right. And, you know, with that being said, I, you know, I feel like, you know, we are we are very prone to, we, we take somebody and we put them on this pedestal, like with Barack Obama, you represent black folks, so you got to do the best. Simone Biles, you represent black folks, you got to do the best. Naomi Osaka, half Japanese, or you got to represent J Japan, even though half the Japanese people don't even acknowledge her at all. And so... And she half black too, so she got to represent us. <laughs> right. You know? And then, and then I don't know if you're from, if you're familiar with it, um, this this new um, athlete, this other athlete, uh, Filipino, uh, Hidalian Diaz. 
she brings home the first gold for the Philippines in weightlifting. Uh -huh. So now I'm concerned. I'm like, okay, is she going to end up experiencing the same, you know, mental fate? And the thing is, though, is that she very well could already have been because, you know, she's been to the Olympics a few times before now. And this time she actually was able to get the gold medal. But, you know, there's also cultural factors when it comes to it. You know, certain countries have, just like as black people, we have different beliefs when it comes to mental health or being in the South. Uh, you see that. Or being Christian. You see what they that, say, he gets a little touched. You know, and so, uh, and so they're definitely beliefs to mental health. And so you get in other countries like Japan or China or wherever, you know, as a culture, they have their own beliefs about mental health. And so... Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, there's a chance that she's already dealing with stuff. And and you think about even Shakari Richardson. I mean, there was so much focus on the fact that she smoked weed, which, you know, truth be told, is legal in a lot of places. And, you know, you can go buy weed at a dispensary. So the fact that you can buy it at a dispensary, you know, this, you know, just does a lot, does away with a lot of the rule aspect to me. I do respect the rule and the rule exists and the rule needs to go. And I'm I'm with you 100. percent And, I, and I too, it's, it's an Olympic rule too. So you have to think about every country that participates in the Olympics, and everybody doesn't doesn't do it the way we do it. So there's a lot of con a lot of context of that. They but, smoking hot cheese and stuff. But the most important thing is that there was more focus on the fact that she did smoke weed versus why she smoked weed, and the exactly. fact that her mother passed away as an Olympian or a person who is expected to go and go to the Olympics, already being a, um, a premier college athlete, uh, having a difficult relationship with your mom, uh, of course, wanting, I'm sure, to have a better relationship with your mom. And then she passes away. And mm -hmm. my thing is, okay, who's around her? Like people was like, well, the weed man, she have sold her the weed. Well, who was around her to get her the therapy that she needed? Exactly. Around her to get her to, to get her to a counselor or somebody who can talk to her and help her process these things, versus like, well, you're an athlete, you're here mm -hmm. for the results. This is a transactional relationship, and we need you to perform. And that's a lot of these things. It's like, well, you got the privilege of being here, you got the privilege of being there, and it's like, when did when did my ability to run fast or do gymnastics or do whatever? Uh, disqualify me from being a human being. Dealing right. With, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, right. And I think that's uh, you know, the conversation more than anything is like, and for a person of color, a female person of color, especially mm -hmm. to be able to say, I'm not doing this. This is not good for my mental health and then not do it. Uh, shows a level of power and control that is very uncomfortable to the people who are already in power and control. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So you perform, but you got to come out and answer all these stupid questions that we ask you. And it's like, you know what? I ain't answering these questions. Right. Yeah, right and I thought right. that was very interesting yeah. because, you know, Naomi got fined because she would not go and answer the media's questions. Yeah. And like, if you remember when Cam Newton lost the Super Bowl, when, when his team lost the Super Bowl, and he walked out during the press conference, and it's like they're okay. answering. I'm over here, so I won't get fined. You know, but then like the team that won is like feet oh from feet away from him celebrating, and he's having to hear that, process that that he just lost his game, and answer all these dumb questions, and it's like and he walks off, and it's like well he's not being mature, he's being this, he's being that, and no. it's like look at what you're asking this person to do just because the money in my bank account is more than somebody else's doesn't mean my mental capacity should be, you know, more right. than somebody else's or even right. like, uh, I would listen to the breakfast club today and it was talking about, and I'm using guys as an example too, to kind of just show how it's across the board, the malice in the palace, when the Pistons and the Pacers got to fighting, I was listening to the breakfast club and they were talking about that. And it was like, you know, as much as you demonize the players, Tell me who in this in the world is going to let you walk up, throw a beer in their face, and then we not fight. And first of all, mm -hmm. and, ne and next thing, you're going to jail because that's assault if you throw a beer on me. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, but after you get a well whooped ass, yeah. <laughs> so, 
And so what happens <laughs> is, is that there's this expectation of as athletes, as black athletes, as mm -hmm. women, is that you just perform. You don't, you don't have a political stance. You don't have mental health issues. You don't have family stuff unless it fits our, you know, what we think it should be. You know what I'm saying? You don't have all these things. You just go out and perform and be happy and glad that you got the ability to do it and you shouldn't complain about the responsibilities that come along with it. And exactly. that's not, I mean, what, in what sense does that make? And how does that impact a person, impact a person's mental health, period? Right. You know and so, okay. you know, and so those, that overwhelming uh, stress, that overwhelming, uh, you know, anxiety and depression and all this stuff, man, like, we can't look at athletes and say, well, you got money and notoriety and you should be okay. You know, yeah. especially the black athletes, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, and as black people in general, we, you know, we are, there's a black, there, there, there's a connection between black identity and struggle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like you, so you ain't black, black, if you ain't eat syrup sandwiches and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Growing up, like, listen. Now, syrup sandwich is good. Now, especially if you got that old, uh, what the, the Alaga syrup. That I was mean, the good syrup. syrup, you know yes, like, syrup. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you didn't get whooped with extension cords and all this stuff, you ain't, you ain't I mean, get no black experience. And it's like. I mean, I did, but. But why But why does that have to be like the, the experience? You know what I'm saying? Why does that qualify blackness? All right. And so, you know, I think with that, we haven't had the space to really have the full range of emotions and be whole human beings for most of the, our time in this country. And so along with that, you have, you have a culture of not really talking about emotions. You know, you have a culture mm -hmm. of internalizing stuff because you didn't have the space to talk about it outside of church and stuff like that. And so that's why it's important for us to look at like, you know, the stigma that these athletes are dealing with and how it affects and how it shows up culturally as well. Like we, you know, as athletes, as black people in general, you know, we've been dealing with these things on a micro level and a macro level. And you're just seeing it play out where instead of just dealing with it, some people are just saying something about it. Right. Okay. All right. So I got a question. Now okay. we're talking about these athletes and we're talking about all that good stuff. How can the average person just get some help? You know, how, how, what, what can I do? Like, what can, okay, what can Shay do if she see me like, like she feel like I need help? What can she do to help me? Well, first off, from an individual basis, like listening and affirming is what people need. People don't need advice. People don't need to be told, like, Think about people, think about when you're sad or you've dealt with depression or anxiety or whatever, and people mm -hmm. just say, snap out of it. Man, just, you know, you got, you got to get over that jump, man. Snap out of it. Push push through. And it's like, yeah, but I can't. You know what I'm saying? Or you lose somebody close right. to you, and it's like, Boy. man, you should be over that by now, man. You got you got to shake that off. Right. It's like, you my mama just died. What are you talking about shaking it off? How do you shake yeah. my mama dying off? You know what I'm saying? Or a relationship ending or a job loss or whatever. And so I think listening and affirming people, you know, listening to and affirming them, not giving advice, not saying, well, this is what I did to get over it. You need to do the same thing too. Even if it's coming from a decent place, that's not what people need to hear. So I think on the individual basis, it's like, you know, you good? You good, sis? You good, bro? You know, you need to talk. I want you to know I'm here for you if you need to talk. And now just listen. We can go get a drink and chop it up or whatever. Mm -hmm. um he said go get a drink chop it up <laughs> yeah you know or if it's like or if you tell me some stuff okay i can listen i can affirm and let's get you to some places that can help you and that's where like it's important for us to not only talk about mental health but also be willing to engage in help seeking services and by that i mean you know of course going to counseling you know counseling is a good thing you know for all you church folks out there, I mean, God made therapists as well. You know what I'm saying? And so, and, and not just your pastor. 
And not just your pastor, pastor, man. Not just your pastor. And it's not fair to them to be put in those positions to be more than what they're, you know, able to be. You know, it's sound advice. And then there's like clinical therapy. And so and we give we do clinical therapy. We don't do this advice giving. And so, you know, if you have a job with insurance, you can use your insurance to go. Your job most likely has uh, employee benefits and you can use your employee assistance to get counseling. Sometimes you get, you know, which to like three to six free counseling sessions a year from your employee benefits. Uh, if you're dealing with grief, there's a grief counseling uh, support group in Birmingham that's free. So that's an option. Okay. If you're dealing okay. with crisis, you have crisis counseling uh, through the crisis center and uh, an individual counseling. Like I said, you know, you can contact one of these places. You can go to psychology today and, you know, you can use your insurance to bill or they have like slide and scale fees where you might be able to work out a lower price, but it's an option too. Okay. Okay. So, um, and it's not just like, I know I, I say a lot of stuff about females, but like, man, man, y'all women bipolar, mm-hmm. you, you know, stop saying that. Mm-hmm. Man, you just got a serious face when I said that, man. But so, you so need to okay. stop saying that. So, <laughs> I, so hey, it went, it went in. Yeah. Jeez, listen, right. I, hey, I, I couldn't, I couldn't be here and be me and do what I do and hear that and not say anything. Yeah. Okay. So, so just so I can get clarification and it wouldn't be me to not ask this question. Okay. Bipolar. If I, if, if I say, Hey, girl, you, you acting bipolar. Don't say that. I'm, I'm, I'm asking. If you I'm, say it, don't say it. I'm, I'm asking. It in that where, okay, I'm acting like this one, one, like right now, 30 seconds later, I'm right here acting some, nope. this other way. Then nope. 30 seconds later, I'm acting nope. this other way. I nope. got all these different personalities. That's not that. No. Nope. And first that's off, not that's not it. And then that's very insensitive to somebody who may be diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Uh, okay. It makes it sound like an affliction. Um, you know, I hate this word, but I'm going to say it just to make a point is when people say stuff like retard. I hate that word to the core of me all right but people will say it and like oh man stop doing such and such and it's like nah that's a terrible word all right so we should take that out of, I, out of music agree. too yeah you should so, take it out of your lexicon because first off no, it's, not it's, even music. More, it's not even used anymore in the profession all right no. and so and even when mental retardation was a term that was used we didn't use the abbreviated term like the slang term the derogatory term so like to say you acting bipolar all right if my mood changes, how does that make me any different from any person, anybody else? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's moods change. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so now, could there be something connected to a mental health issue if my mood changes rapidly? Sure. All right. Does that mean I have a mental health disorder if my mood changes more than one time in an hour? No. You know what I'm saying? And so, and the thing is, is that it's not a gender specific thing. Men's mood change too. There's no like gender specific diagnosis. There's no gender specific mental health issue. It's like, you know, saying women are too emotional or something like that. Like guys aren't emotional. It's just society yeah. has has conditioned us as men to be less uh open with our emotions and made it okay for women, women to be more open with their emotions. You so that's, absolutely that's, right. that, that's a society like constructed thing. That's a, that's an environmental thing. That's not a genetic thing. And so, but you'll see surveys that say, well, men are more like this and women are more like this. That has a lot to do with how we're conditioned to be. So don't ever say that again. My okay. Brother. Let me let me let me let me let me fix it. Let me fix. It. I said it to 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 just kind of bring that out a little bit. You know, I work in the medical field every day. We we the only we don't even put that in in the charts anymore. If it's anything, we say mood disorder. That's yeah. that's what we see in in the charts. 
And like I may see schizophrenia, you know, in like an older chart, you may see bipolar, you may see, you know, stuff like that. But all of it is more on the mood disorder now. It's, it's under that umbrella. Uh, so I understand. I just said that to to kind of pull that point out because okay. we are we are kind of insensitive. I ain't that bad thing. Now, if I'm okay. mad, I'm, okay. nah, I'm just playing. Well, uh, yeah, but I, I mean, ain't going to say it big okay. here fighting. It's, it's the language. You know what I'm saying? Like, language is so important to, like, you know, how we see things in context. So if you tell your child they're a piece of trash, then they're going to believe they're a piece of trash. If you give your child love, they're going to see themselves as somebody who's worthy of being loved. And a lot of, has to, a lot of that has to do with language and tone and all these different things. Like, and so if it works on the individual, then it works on a, on a broader scale, too. Okay. Okay. You know and so if I group people or I say a term that is a diagnosis, but I use it in a derogatory way and I say it to the, this particular person or people over and over again, then they may feel like, you know what? I need to hold back my emotions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As, then, as, as a man, I, I know for a fact that I have sat there and, and wanted to cry, wanted to do stuff, but I won't do it in front of folks. Because I, I, you know, they'd be like that old, that old sweet booty. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's something else you shouldn't say too. Sweet booty. Don't ever say it again. <laughs> <laughs> See, there. I was making an example, man. I was making an example. I ain't gonna get that switch. I don't miss nothing. You know what I'm hey, saying? Man, so, see, you don't get hey, that switch. Right, look, when when yeah. I see her at church, son, he probably just gonna punch me in the chest. Listen, and I, I, <laughs> I, I, I am, I am an ally in the LGBTQ, LGBTQ community, and I'm a believer in language, and I'm a believer in making sure that we're, and especially in our community, we are creating space to take that out. You know what I'm saying? Because. Yes, it's become common in a lot of ways, but just because it's become common doesn't mean it's okay to say it and repeat it. All right. Right. So, but you're right. When it comes to men and emotions, sometimes it's seen as weakness. All right. Mm -hmm. And so we're conditioned not to be that way. However, just because you don't shed those tears in that moment doesn't mean that emotion is not expressed somewhere else. And it's probably going to be expressed somewhere else. At a time when you're not going to be in control of it, and somebody could be the res the recipient of the hurt you internalize when you could have just let those tears go, all right? Wow. And so that's why it's important for us as people to allow ourselves to experience emotions and not see emotions as a bad thing. Anger is okay. It's what you do with it. Sadness is okay. Mm -hmm. Happiness is okay. All these things, being indifferent is okay. It's okay to be to have these things. It's giving yourself permission and space to be able to, you know, feel away and not have to hold it back. You know what I'm saying? You're right. Because if we internalize it, then it's not only hurting us mentally, but it's also going to hurt us physically. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. But the yeah. older people say the the older folks say, "Hey, you hold all that hold all that mess in. It's gonna tear you down." You know, uh, stress. My dad used to always say, "Man, don't stress that shit. It's a silent killer. It's gonna take you out from the inside." Yeah. And so that that I, I really truly believe that because once when I start stressing stuff, that's when I I start seeing different changes in my health. Yeah, because it, it's gonna go in every direction, but it's not that. You don't stress because stress is a part of it. All right. But it's OK. I acknowledge this is taking place and I talk to my support system about what I have going on. And I go to counseling about and I talk to my therapist about what's going on. And I do healthy things to help me, you know, manage stress. So, yeah, drinking from time to time is cool, but that can't be your stress reliever. You know, what am mm -hmm. I doing? Am I, am I doing some yoga? Am I meditating? Am I exercising? Am Man, I yoga is hard. In nature? You know what I'm saying? Am I doing things to to actively, in a healthy way, reduce stress and address some of these things? And so, you know, 
it's, you know, not just not stressing. It's what am I doing with the stress? It's like anxiety and depression. It's like, it's mm -hmm. not that I never ever experience it and I'm poor right. by experience and I'm weak. It's when it happens because something is going to cause anxiety and something's going to cause me to feel sad. It's can I allow myself to feel my feelings and then can I employ my coping tools and utilize my support system to deal with it versus, you know, I got to shake this off, mm -hmm. you know, because the thing is you can get up and go to work and still be anxious and that's okay. It doesn't have to like get rid of anxiety to get up and go to work. It's, you know what? It, I'm okay. Well, anxiety, you going with me because I got, I need to go to work. All right. It's true. And, uh, my bill is bigger than that anxiety attack I'm about to have. But that at the same time is like I can acknowledge, you know, what's taking place and I can attend to that uh, versus like repressing, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, so it doesn't, it doesn't mean that, you know, if something happens, I have to stop. Right. Know? And it doesn't mean that if something happens, I can't stop. It's you know, I do what I need to do, but also I can acknowledge what's going on. I can be honest about it and not, you know, beat myself up or shame myself or whatever. And so, uh, so yeah, I mean, that's a long way to like answer one question, but. Um, hey, but it's, it's needed though, man. You know, like a lot of people sitting up here now, I, I know we probably probably lost a few of the listeners and viewers that normally sit up there and want to want to hear me talk crazy and do all this kind of stuff. But this right here tonight, was needed. Hell, I needed True. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I needed it. So the thing is, though, Demetrius, is that uh, people gonna connect to this because people people are tired of the conventional and and the message is changing. Yeah. You, not only you seeing the tennis player, you seeing Shikari, you seeing Simone, but you've also seen these basketball players. You've also see more things on social media that speak to mental health and it's okay not to be okay. Like the message is getting out there more and more. And as a right. black therapist, I've seen a lot more black people come to counseling period, like looking for therapists. Yeah. You right. know? And so, so I think, you know, people may be more into this than what you may think. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a good conversation. You know I mean? It's, yeah. it's needed. And uh, this was supposed to be 15 minutes, and we're going on like 30 some minutes. So. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say, man. We were supposed to talk 15 minutes and be out. But yeah, I do need I, to go. So this, you know, <laughs> I couldn't stop it because you you were hitting so many points, man. But just I know because time is well spent. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. Shay, you got anything for? Well, I mean, we could go on and on and on. This is just one of those those subjects that allows itself to do that. But uh, for time's sake, we we can go ahead and and wrap it up tonight and maybe we visit it at a later date. I'm down for it because, you know, I can hear Darius say more things. I'm going to call him out on and help him out. <laughs> Dang, you ain't got to call me out like yes, that, because I am loving it. <laughs> hey. so, but, yeah, hey, and uh, her, man, I appreciate you, man, and uh, remind me to never, ever go to the gym with you. If y'all hadn't seen him on Facebook, he go to the gym every day, like 17 times a day. And, he, and <clears throat> like he he him by himself, man. He I need to her, be able, I this, need to be with him then. You know, her he he go in there and he put on this little uh, garbage bag jacket and get in there and you see all this little sweat dripping, look like he uh -huh. pulled a gallon of water down there. And I just I, hell, I don't know. But man, hey, you you doing the thing, man. You motivate me. Let me say this. I know we finna go, but let me say this because as a therapist, I, I'm also in therapy. You know. And I think I saw a post the other day where it's like it was like two years ago from when I started my first with my first therapy session, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, me exercising and stuff like that, that's one of my ways of like, you know, having a healthy outlet. Uh yeah. definitely. And, you know, from a health <laughs> standpoint too, it's important. But you know, I also go to therapy. Like, you know, my best friend in the world, you know, in October died recently, like unsuspected, you know unsuspectedly and you know talked to him the night before and he was dead the next day this has been my best friend oh wow 
Yeah. And he's we're cousins. His mom's like my mom. My mom was like his mom, like that kind of closeness. And so uh my mom has passed away. My dad, my grandparents who I grew up with, with my mom, uh, uncle who I seen basically every day. You know, I mean I've had like loss has been my thing. And so, you know, even as a therapist, you know, I had to get into a place where I can have that safe space to talk where there's no judgment, there's no threat of this getting outside the room because the person is bound by confidentiality. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to like talk to somebody who also lost somebody and give them, like you talk to a friend and say y'all both lost this person, then you're like providing support and trying to get support at the same time. And that's a tricky place to be in. Yeah. Being in therapy, yeah. Being in therapy is just about you. You know, it's solely about you. And so, you know, for me to, you know, I've been in, you know, I've been in therapy. I'm still in therapy. And I, you know, so I wouldn't just sell it to somebody as like, well, this is my way of income and that's it. No, I believe in it. And I think, you know, we owe it to ourselves to like have a space so we can get to like some healing. Because, you know, mm -hmm. we got hurts, we got traumas. You know what I'm saying? We got we got all kinds of stuff that we just carry with us on a day-to-day -day basis. And, okay. you know, you carry it well, but you're still carrying it. And one term we use is that the body keeps score. So yeah. mm. any any hurts you experience, any traumas, any of that stuff, the body is keeping score all the time, even though you may present like everything else is okay. Right, right. <clears throat> so, so her, man, I mean... I appreciate it. And I heard you say earlier that you, you do some individual counseling sessions like, you know, private practice type deal. How could they get with you if they need the help? So uh, I, I work with a company on the side called Restorative Counseling Services. Restorative Counseling Services. One of the beauties of it right now is that, you know, we, we do virtual work too, so everything's out in person. Uh, but they're located in Homewood. I personally am tapped out because I'm also getting my PhD, so I don't have much room for more clients right now. But if somebody <laughs> drops off, I have somebody to jump in. But we have a team of good therapists. And if you know, if you reach out to me directly and say, you know, I can connect you with somebody who I might think might be a good fit based on what you have going on. I know several people who are in the field that I trust. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. I'm pretty active on there. Uh, healthier mm -hmm. underscore herb. That's healthier underscore herb. And it's mainly mental health topics, memes, and me working out. So <laughs> it's not, it's not a lot to it. But, uh, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, you know. so if I can't do it, I can connect you to somebody who can. Okay. Hey, man, I appreciate that, man. Herb, you you the man, dude. You you the man. Hey, y'all hey, y'all hearing it here on the Signy X Show. We're not just crazy and what we say. We crazy in the head, too. And Herb going to be our therapist. But that... <laughs> hey, man, I Herb. too loud, boy. I'm going to mess with your bill. Uh, no, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never <laughs> mind. <laughs> hey, Herb, no, man, I ain't, 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 ain't that therapist, man. I ain't going to bust your head like that. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, I appreciate that, man. But Man, yo. So, man, y'all just heard from my dude, Herb Wilkerson. Excuse me, Herbert Wilkerson. <laughs> Why you got to say his government name? Ma master counselor, you know what I'm saying? Soon to be Dr. Mm. Wilkerson. You know what I'm saying? That's my dude, you know? But him going to the gym and doing all that crazy stuff, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey it's crazy like that, but, uh, you know. Got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Well, I woke up to go give me a cold pop. Then I thought somebody was barbecuing, barbecuing. I said, oh, Lord, Jesus, it's a fire. Then I ran out. I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. I ran for my life. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that.
Man. You are quiet. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I ain't oh been going to the gym before him because ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got, ain't nobody got time for that. But yo, seriously though, this mental health thing, it is real, y'all. It is definitely real. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions about mental health, um, don't call me because I don't know. But you can call Herb. He gave y'all his information, man. He does know this stuff for real. Look him up on Instagram, Healthier Herb. What is it? Healthier underscore Herb underscore something like that. Healthier Herb. That's his 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 uh Instagram. Look him up. He can get you to who you need to get to. So Shay. Yes. How you doing? I'm all right. How are you? All right. So Shay, do you need mental health? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is the first stage of needing help. Not one to admit it. Whatever. <laughs> Yo, man, we have had a great show today, man. Yes. You know, earlier very this, good conversation. Earlier this week, I was really feeling down and not really not knowing what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Talking to her has really just kind of made me realize one thing. What is that? I need to call my counselor back. You know, I enjoy laying on the couch and talking to her. Well, that's what you need to do. Yeah, I'm going to have to call her back. But yo, man, hey, I had a good time with y'all today. Don't forget, you can always catch us where? Right here, Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube live. Twitch. You can also hear our reruns on all of your favorite social media platforms, wherever you like to hear your podcast. We are there. That's right. And yo, man, we are on Big Mouth Radio. We're on WPAM Radio. We are on um, iHeart Radio. We are on Apple Podcasts. We are on just about everything that you could think of. We might be there. Yep. All you got to do is look up Sig and Yak Show. C-I-G-A-N-D-G-N-A-C. We'll be there. Just look up your shoulder, honey. We'll, we'll be, be there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, Just type our name. Sig and Yak. And we'll, we'll be there. there. Hey, man, y'all don't forget, man, we will be there. And next time, next week, y'all be right here. We'll see y'all next week. <laughs>